Let me introduce you to one of the most wrongly cared for pets, the hamster. Hamsters are different from the low maintenance, cheap, and small space pets they seem to be. They actually require a large cage and daily care and maintenance. So let's say you've decided to get a hamster. Let's talk cages first. It's not often that you'll find pet store cages are suitable in the ethical standards. Aquarium tanks, sold for fish and reptiles, could be used as a substitute. And with their high walls, they can fit much more bedding. The minimum you'd want is a 40 gallon. Pet stores market their cages specifically towards children, turning the hamster into what seems to be just luxury toys. This is why some brands have pink castle cages or dinosaur cages. These toys are never big enough, ventilated enough, or have the ability to hold enough bedding for the hamster to burrow in. It's best to avoid anything smaller than 500 square inches of floor space for a dwarf and male Syrian hamsters. Female Syrian hamsters should be in nothing smaller than 1,000 square inches of floor space. You need to give your hamster enough bedding to burrow in. Aim for six inches at the least, but the more you have, the better. Make sure to pack down the bedding too, as this holds the structure of their burrow much better. So now you know what the base of the cage is and the amount of bedding. What bedding should you give it? Aspen and spruce bedding is the only safe wood bedding for your hamster. Avoid things like cedar and pine. These are unsafe and can give your hamster a respiratory infection. Paper-based bedding is safe as long as it's not scented. Colorful bedding is fine. Hemp bedding is also safe and much cheaper. So now you know your cage and bedding. What about food? It's improbable you'll find a store brand of hamster food that will be suitable. Anything that only contains pellets is a hard no. Go for something with more ingredients like seeds, nuts, and plants instead of pellets. Usually you'll have to mix different brands to get the right mix for your ham. Mixing Higgins Sunburst and Missouri Rat and Mouse pellets is the most common substitute. If you want to find something even healthier, stores on Etsy have good seed mixes. Giving your hamster protein is also important. Mealworms are great and freeze-dried meat is a favorite of my hamsters. For more information on hamster nutrition, please check the description of this video. We've talked about food, bedding, and cage size. Now what? Your hamster can't be living in an empty cage. I've learned from that. This picture here is my Syrian hamster's old setup. It's very bare and empty. You'll want to aim for a more crowded and busy cage with plenty of solid hides, tunnels, sprays, and enrichment. Dig boxes are great for this. You can fill them with all kinds of different substrates, cocoa fiber or chunks, mosses, and many other things, links in the description. Grapevine wood and cork bark are great natural things to chew on, climb on, and hide under. You can find sprays on Amazon and Etsy. These are great because hamsters get to forage like they would naturally. Just make sure not to give them these too often if they eat them quickly. Ceramic or wooden hides are better than plastic ones, especially the see-through ones. Make sure you have multiple hides so your hamster has a choice. Grass, seaweed, and hay tunnels are a good choice for your hams. Make sure to use a platform on heavy items to prevent them from falling on the hamster if it burrows under them. So we have that down, now you need a wheel. A dwarf or Chinese hamster should have a minimum wheel size of 8 inches, but larger is better. A Syrian should have a minimum of 10 inches. If their back doesn't curve, it's suitable. Never use flying saucer wheels or barred ones. This is my starter guide to getting a hamster. Thank you for watching this video. Of course, never go off of one source and please continue to look at more.